Welcome to Gas Station Cappuccino by Caffeine and Kilos. I am Danny Lear. Next to me, as always, Dean Sidoris. Here we are. GSC, baby. Here we are. GSC, baby. Working through our sound checks. What do you like to say when you do mic check, Dean? I like to say uh, made up gibberish. Uh, actually made up... Uh, uh, Bulgarian gibberish. Oh, can I hear? I'd like to. I mean, obviously, we got like uh, Ramash Nash, Ramaskis, Haskis. Very, very John, John, John very John Haskis. North. Yavashna. Oh, what does that mean? I think it means like, uh, okay, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get let's get this lift. I like uh, I go. I like to do two different things. Haskis. I do sound checks. He like says to, that uh, one a lot. Haskis. Yeah, Haskis. I like to say. Uh, one is sometimes I just like to make bird call noises. Mm -hmm. I just like to go, ka, ka. See mm -hmm. if it's picking up the, the hard K and the light A there. Yeah, there's a lot of hard Ks. Ka. Constantly check those. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, sometimes also I like to say yoga pose names. Shavasana. Or uh, Twisted uh, Zebra. <laughs> Chaturung Chaturugna. Chaturunga? Chaturunga. Child Spandex. <laughs> Happy adolescent. Who's like the fucking guy that's sitting in these like yoga brainstorming rooms and just making up these names? God. Well, you know the. How do you get that job? Well, the the, the real ones like uh, like the Chaturanga and Shavasana. I think those are you know some other language. Yo oh, okay. yogi language. Yeah. Okay. Like if you're in granola, you know granola what I mean. You just language. know. Yeah. But well, so Shavasana is dead man's pose. I just lay in there. It's like a recovery position. Oh, so it's like uh, rebound. It's like rebound. Shavasana. Honestly, like since Ramwa became up. a thing, like that, that is now yoga to me. Well, it is. That's well, I mean, like as as far as like I don't even know. I, as far as I'm concerned, yoga yoga it doesn't exist. Yoga is just Ramwa now. Yeah, uh, you know I don't what? Even call, I don't, I don't, like someone says, "Oh, I go to yoga." I'm like, "Oh, so you go to Ramwa?" No, oh, yeah. Where do you go? Me too. I go to the chill room. Yeah. Oh no, like I go actually go like a yoga studio. Yeah, you go to Ramwa studio. <laughs> I feel like we're saying the same thing. Yeah, you're just calling it the wrong thing. Yeah. You're, oh, you're you're mispronouncing. You're 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 leaving out the W. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's not a silent W. Yeah. So I'm gonna need you to say Ramwa next Sorry. time. Sorry. Uh, you know what Ramwa? Honestly, the the biggest benefit is that I really believe is the breathing exercises. I wish they did more breathing. You can always just do your own. They encourage that. They and I do. I do, but what happens is uh, you what can't happened, trust yourself. You can't trust your own counts. No, I, I do. You know what's funny is when I do my own counts, it takes longer than when I do theirs. Like I breathe, I do slower than they do. I find that mm. usually. Mm. And so, because what I'll do is I'll, I'll count them, right? So I don't think it has to be exactly on exact the exact amount of time. No, I think, I, if, I, I think if you just do it and try. I think the idea is that as long as the exhale is longer than the inhale, you're good. Mm. That's like the, the goal. But so anyway, like I was talking to my wife and like we we're doing Ramwad and she hasn't done it very many times. And so I was like really hoping, so I was trying to get her to do more breathing because she had this like super tight, uh, like hamstring or quad is super tight. So I was like getting my thumb in there and digging that shit out and it hurt pretty bad. And I was like, you gotta like breathe through it. And I was trying to explain to her about breathing through it. And I was like, well, we'll do Ramwad later and it was like teach you how to breathe, right? But then it wasn't one with the, where they did the counted oh, breathing. Man, I haven't done one of those in a while where they, that, had, that had the breathing. It's been yeah. a while. I wish they do. Well, you're gonna have to text Ryan. We're gonna let him know. Yeah, we're gonna let him know. Yeah. Otherwise, we want changes. Otherwise, I'm gonna cancel. <laughs> Unsubscribe. Yeah. We start doing regular yoga again. Old school. What's that? <laughs> Dude. Old school. Old school. Yeah. That's yeah. what's going on. God. Yeah. Uh, Dean, earlier you were telling me uh, you had to go to the bank later to deposit a check, and I was confused because I know you use uh, same bank I do. It's a national bank. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever go to the bank to deposit a check. I use the mobile deposit. Mm -hmm. I'll just take a picture of it, mm -hmm. flip it over, sign the back, take a picture, mm -hmm. and it's done. Why Why do you need to go somewhere to do that? See, I I used to do that all the time. Yeah. But then I, I don't like the fact that they just don't give me my money right away. Mm -hmm. And I understand why they don't. But like, I'm gonna, if I have the Boing. time, if I have the time, uh, I'm gonna go down there. And I'm gonna cash it, and then I'm just gonna deposit it directly into my account at the ATM outside. Cash deposit. <laughs> Why? So I get the money instantly, regardless if I need it or not. Instantly, it's the fact that I want it instantly. So I'm gonna use a little loophole system and did it, did it right away. 
So why? It, it's interesting that they'll cash it out right away. That's that exactly my point. That's why it's so frustrating. Wait, but then so you're you gonna let me you're gonna let me cash this with zero proof that it's even legit. Right. But you're not gonna let me have it right away when I use my app, and I'm obviously not trying to do anything shady because I'm using my app with my name and my money. You're logged in my account. Yeah. And you're not going to give me access to this currency. Instead, you're going to let me actually get the real thing in real time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, I know what you're saying. You're not going to let me put these fake numbers into this like imaginary uh, air. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I can't let these. I can't make these numbers go up in this imaginary calculator that counts that counts my money instantly. But you're going to give me like hard cash right away, like it's not a problem. Yeah. That's what I don't understand. You know what I'm what I'm caught up on a little bit here, especially you, if it's like a realistic amount. You know what I mean? I can understand if it's like a ten thousand dollar check. Like they're not gonna, just gonna give it to you, like uh, like put in your account like right put it in your account right away when you like take a picture of it. You but think it's like, anything under whatever two thousand bucks? Yeah, you would think. Well, even I would even say like I can understand it to a certain point. Like sometimes if someone writes you a check for, you know, let's say you someone owed you some money and they had a check and they gave you a check for like eighty dollars, and like. You would have to wait like two, three days to use to that eighty dollars. That eighty bucks, and it's like, yeah. give me a break. Yeah, like, come on. Uh, now here's the one thing that really kind of it was like me a off. tax check. So it was like a decent amount of money, but it was still like, uh, that's the kind of times I do it because other, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just because like. So it seemed like a government check. It's like I'm giving you this money to use for other people. Well, you're gonna take this and loan it out to people anyway. Yeah, so you're not going to let me like get access to it right away, but you're damn well, you're going to use it right away to loan to somebody. It's a common misconception about insurance companies, too, is people think like you pay your insurance premiums, and they just like hang on to that money in a bank account. No, they loan that shit out. Like You pay your insurance premiums, and then they do loans with that. It's so, like you get in a car accident. They don't just like reach into an account and like that's your money that's been piling up and give it to you or however that works. Like, that's it's a uh, it basically insurance companies are like banks. Yeah, they exactly. loan, they loan out the money. Exactly, and uh, make yeah, money I, off your money. I just get so I just it just I hate these stupid little things like that. Something with uh, in your story though that you you mentioned this time that I never caught before, is you said you get the cash, and you go outside the ATM to deposit it. Yeah, because I don't want to just cash it and then necessarily like hand it right back to them. Why not? I probably should. That's what I. If, I feel like if I'm going through the effort. Of get walking my happy ass into the bank. Well, see, luckily, and I'm going to the teller and I'm giving them the, the check and I'm getting cash back. While I'm there, I'm saying, "Okay, thank you." They say, "Is there anything else I can do for you?" I say, "Yes, I would like you to deposit this cash into my account." Yeah, I honestly, yeah, I probably should do it next time just to see what happens. But um, it's funny too because, like, because we do our business banking out of the same, same bank. bank. So it's like even more frustrating that they don't yeah. do it right away, especially when I use the business line for personal and. Uh, business transactions. Oh, you always go to the business line. Yeah, I mean, like, they, that, they owe that to me. How much money, like, our company puts through that account every month for them to loan out, they better let me go on that line whenever I want. Do you ever get frustrated when you're in the, the small business line at the bank and, like, you're the only one there, I'm sitting in the, the small business chairs waiting for him to call me up, and then there's teller empty, which calls the next person in the regular line. Okay, no problem. I understand. Right? No, I don't understand that. Sorry, no, the, the next person, like next available, right? Because maybe, maybe the, uh, maybe right before I walked in, the previous person they called was from the business line. Who knows? Right? Because they, they generally, they alternate is how it kind of goes. And real quick, but, before you keep going, I'm going to say it doesn't matter, but keep going. Okay. So generally they alternate. Usually they go like one other sign, then business, whatever. Anyway, uh, or at least the person on the far end. Anyway, point is. There's like, okay, next person up, and okay, I'm like, whatever, right, I just got here, no problem, I'll wait. And then uh, that person, then next teller's up, and they're like, oh yeah, next person from the line. And I'm just like standing there, I'm just like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Like it's a, Oh, that makes me fucking infuriated. And it's it's not, don't, don't get this the wrong way, I in no way feel superior to anybody, but the point is this. Why they, do you have this fucking line then? They say, this is the line for B, you go here and you always get called up next. And then you don't do it. It's a it's a lack of follow through on the promises that irritates me. Well, I I am gonna kind of disagree with you. Like honestly, I think that in banking situations, that if you are there for a business thing and you have your own line, you should be helped next, regardless. Yeah. You should have priority, because also like you 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 are the people that are keeping these banks going. 
with like the, like your businesses. You know what I mean? Like they're not they don't make any money off these regular deposits and like you know what I'm saying? Like they're not. I don't know. I feel like you should get special treatment for that. Hmm. I'm All not right. saying like me as a person. I'm like not like talking about like I Dean Sidoris deserves special treatment. It's like no, like my account deserves to have better uh, service because like I'm doing a lot of business for your bank. Like that's why you have this line and now you're not using it properly. Yeah. Does that sound like like an asshole? Maybe a little bit. I don't think so. Like it has <laughs> nothing to do with the like the person there, like no. a normal guy just like me, but it's just like okay. Why even have the line then? Make why everybody the use the same line then. Why have the line? That's where I'm at. Where I'm at hundred percent is like why have and, the line? And guess what? If the line is long, sometimes the business line gets a little long. That happens. And that's fine too. And I'll wait in that line without a com single complaint. Yeah. They shouldn't just be like a teller for every person that's in the business line. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if anybody's in front of me in line, it has nothing to do with that. It's the fact that like you're not pulling from this line because of what? Because this line's long, you feel bad for them. That's not my problem. You ever say something? No. But just, like, I'm not gonna make a scene. Just stand there and say, <laughs> just do it. If you're gonna, <laughs> if you're gonna make a scene, there's two places you can't do it. Bank and airplane. A bank and an airplane, exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. crowded elevator. Crowded elevator. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, Crowded I'm, elevator. I'm gonna Can just, you imagine you're in an elevator all of a sudden, dude, dude's out. just pissed. <laughs> right? Just and you're, you're in there, like seven strangers, and you're in there, mind your own business, no one's saying shit to anybody, right? You look up, you see the mirror on the ceiling, you go, that's weird, but you don't, you know, just, you know, carry on. And then all of a sudden, the dude next to you just starts lighting someone up. It's uncomfortable. And furthermore, Phyllis! I don't appreciate the way you fold these fucking socks. People, picture how the people fold. All the way. Fold them all the way. Imagine Why are the people, toes sticking out of this one? Imagine how the people felt when uh, that lady started beating Jay-Z's ass in the elevator. Oh, shit. For cheating on his wife. <laughs> Forgot about that. Or when, uh, what's his name? I think that was outside the elevator. Remember when, what's his name, like, uh, hit, uh, Ray, not Ray Lewis. What was his name? Oh, fucking Ray Rice. Ray Rice. God. Oh, yeah. I think they might have been by themselves, though. God. Man, what a scumbag. The elevator, that whole thing. What a scumbag. Oh, yeah. Man, I just, like, small quarters, tight quarters. Because people are super awkward. All right, like, there's a couple fighting. Like, people get super awkward about it anyway. Like, arguing. Mm -hmm. Like, they're bickering. And then you go, then you're shoved in an elevator with them. You're in this, like, 8x8 eight eight box. And these two people are just lighting each other up. Yeah, that's uh, controlled chaos there. Holy Not shit. Not even controlled. You know it's what I It's contained do. chaos. You know what I would do? Pick a side. Yeah, honestly, I think she's right, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Dave, I know you're really upset about these socks folding, but check it out. She's trying, man. And that one toe sticking out, like, come on, you can't just poke that in there yourself. <laughs> you don't think you're right, Danny. Thanks. I mean, yeah, you know. I my name was Danny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what happened. You go. You know, I've never actually, I've never considered that side of it. She is, she actually does a lot. You're right. <laughs> it's over. And, and that's it. And the elevator opens and you just yeah. walk out. Yeah, high fives. Sing. High fives. I'll see you guys. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Glad I, glad I could help. Or maybe, maybe uh, what goes on is, is maybe he gives you some information you didn't know. Maybe he goes, you know, I, that's a valid point, but let me tell you this. She also continues to put the toilet paper on so it goes under the fucking roll. And I keep explaining to her that I prefer it goes over. And she said it doesn't matter. Well, and I explain, if it matters to me, it matters, because I'm someone. <laughs> and and that, I, that's an age-old dilemma. And you then, know, you know what I'd say right I, there? I'd be like, I'd be like, you're right, Phyllis, get your shit together. What's with the socks? Another thing. <laughs> the socks. I don't I think I default to the over, yeah. but I don't really that's care if it's great. under. I I wouldn't change it. No, oh, yeah, I change it. I don't know if I. I mean, maybe it's. I always. I usually. I usually always put it on. Mm -hmm. No, that's not true. But like when it's my turn, I always put it on like that way. Right. But if I were to see it at home and it wasn't uh, the other way, I don't think I would be psychotic enough to change it. <laughs> I I do. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain. I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why I think it matters. <laughs> Is because, all right, take a public bathroom, for example. Yeah. A lot of times the way the rolls are, like, in that metal thing, right? Yeah. So if it's rolled over the back way so it goes under, a lot of times it's, like, going down into the fucking metal thing. Yeah, it gets trapped. It gets trapped in there, and then you got to, like, spin it in reverse and wait for that thing to, like, flip over the edge and try to fucking catch it. And you're doing this whole thing. 
Whereas if it's over, never a problem. If you were to tell me, like, what do you think is the right way, I would say over. Yeah. But. Well, that's a relief. You know what I mean? It's a relief, it's a relief to know that you're not a fucking psycho. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I mean, like, I for sure believe that that's the right way. Yes, and I would probably argue the case, but I wouldn't change it if it was done another way, I don't think. Maybe I would. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever had it in my house where it wasn't that way. I think Kelsey and me are on the same page with like having it, uh, having it out. Jessica, and my dad always had it out. Jessica, it's not that she prefers it under; it's that she just doesn't care. Well, I think I care. In, I obviously I care enough because I always put it the same way. Right. Yeah. So, I guess uh, that is important. <laughs> you really come full circle on this. <laughs> well, like, but I, I, I also thinking about changing the thing. The thing about the changing, though, I don't know if I. Would, I'm not positive if I would change it or not. But I don't think I would. Yeah. Yeah. Because I hear here I feel like it's always the same too. I don't know. At work. I don't yeah, know how it usually is. I don't know. Well, we, I know when I put the gag one on, I always put that over. Yeah, the gag. Because I want that to be an easy grabber. Where did it go? It disappeared. I don't know where it went. Kristen threw it away. Someone did. Someone did. I'll never forget. I think we've already talked about it before, but when John like was panicking, when he ripped the unrippable. Instead of just using the toilet roll next to it, he decided to just rip that little sleeve off of this little simmer like, off. I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> God, that's so funny. It, I, I, it had to have been him, too, to work perfectly on. Oh, yeah. No better person. Oh, yeah. Because you can just see him just getting pissed off. We got to get another one of those. Yeah. It's probably in here somewhere. It's got to be. Someone threw it away. Someone, like, got What is that it. material? Kevlar? It's, like, what is that? It's, <laughs> it's like, unrippable. It's, how John even ripped it is fucking beyond me. I'm going to tell you how he ripped it, and he didn't admit this, but it's just the only thing that makes sense. He went in with his teeth. You think so? I think you bit it. It was by bite size rip. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like just enough to get in the fingertips like a uh, like a cootie catcher. And here's the <laughs> And here's the it's a cootie catcher wipe job. Here's <laughs> Here's the <laughs> Here's the question too. Is like if if you like can't if you're sitting here and you go, I thought I was going crazy, I couldn't rip this thing. If it gets to the point where you gotta sink your teeth into it, you're trying to tell me that you don't like bite it and go, this this doesn't seem like regular toilet paper material. Like at no point it dawns on you that this isn't the appropriate. Is this 100% cotton? Like what is this? This is, this is I'll tell it's you like, what though. It's like quilted cotton here. Yeah, but this man's gonna do a great job. Don't have, don't, have, don't have to worry about my finger going through. If you have no idea about that role, you know, even existing, or even seeing the gag gift anywhere, and like, like, what do you? What is your thought process there? I don't. Well, like, do you think that you're losing it, or do you think that like it's just like some special kind of toilet paper? I would think that you'd be like, if you can't, you're not finding perforations, you can't tear through this shit. I'd probably be like, oh man, I think I'm probably gonna go with the other roll. Well, there's that. What well, if there was another roll option though? I don't know. What you do know, you start thinking? You know what? I, instead of tearing it, you know what I would do? I would just use it <laughs> while still attached to the roll. Oh, you go the old soda can wipe method. Soda can? Oh, use the whole roll? No, no, I wasn't talking soda can. I'm saying you pull off a strand, and while the rest of it's still on the roll, hmm. while it's still attached to the wall, you just use the end of it. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> okay. So it's like a tail. Like a tail. Yeah. yeah. Oh, snake white. Okay. <laughs> I guess so. That should be like one of those things, like a like a like a rusty trombone or like a like a flumpkin. It's called, it's called a snake wipe. When you just wipe your ass with the end of the toilet paper and just leave it and all. Leave it on the roll. Yeah. <laughs> For the next guy to come in. But uh, tomorrow, if you oh, look, you see, you see Aaron in there. Left the, he left his little snake. Oh, wipe. Oh, like a little in snake there. wipe out, huh? Dude, you know, look on uh, Urban Dictionary tomorrow, and it's gonna be in there. Snake wipe. Snake wipe. What's a snake wipe? What's a snake? Wipe? It might already be. A, it might be something. I don't know. No, it's yeah, you take toilet paper and you wipe your butt and then you just leave the end just leave on the on. seat. Just let him know. <laughs> let him know. I had corn last night. Hey, uh, so, Dean, I was thinking about it the other day. I was looking at the, some of the stash of the podcast stuff. Mm. And uh, I don't understand. What do you, why do you think it is that our, our female audience is lagging so far behind the male listeners? Well, man, I don't know. It's pretty obvious. I can't. Think. Uh, <laughs> So who? I don't know if they like talking about snake wipes. <laughs> well, that's because they didn't know it was a thing until now. That's true. How do you check that? 
that actually shows like the type of listener. No, no, I just made that up because we're talking about poop paper again. <laughs> Shit. Because we continue to talk. <laughs> I was like, I had to think about that for a second. Let that register. Like, wait, how are you knowing? Like, what genders? Actually, listening? Uh, there is a way to check. Uh, if you have them like submit like uh, mm -hmm. a yeah. question. Yeah, there's one tracking software actually that set, that'll give you uh, after you have so many episodes. I don't know if we have enough for it to do it yet, but it'll give you some listener information, like based on other surveys, I think, and that type of thing. Mm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Checking out the little PR one. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the. Uh, it's a bag label. Yeah, the bag label. Good old PR one. Good old trusty. Yeah. Old trusty. <laughs> Man. Yeah. So the whole bank situation, though, like I just, I don't know. You're still on that. I'm still on that. I don't know. I'm thinking about the, uh, just the whole get it, the check thing. Just give it back to the lady. Give it to the cat. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yeah. Please deposit this cash into my account. Yeah. Because otherwise, what do you, you're not proving a point. It's even funnier, though, too, that they don't do it instantly when it's like a government check. Yeah. Like a, you know, a federal tax bureau check. Cause like what what what's the concern that it's that it's uh, not that it's not a good check that it's gonna bounce but then you gave me cash for it so obviously it's not a major concern. The whole thing with checks too, don't you think is bizarre? It's just a fucking piece of paper with some fucking numbers written on it. Just like money. <laughs> I know, but like it's like handwritten, <laughs> like it's chicken scratch ass handwriting. Give me this money. Yeah. <laughs> Think of like the, uh, <laughs> think of like when you're in line at the grocery store and the lady in front of you is writing a check. Oh, God. Yeah. People, that, yeah that's that's probably what Dave's yelling at Phyllis about in the elevator. I cannot believe you still have that checkbook. Yeah. <laughs> no. What do you mean you have to order more checks because you're almost out? Maybe that's a sign. <laughs> you should be out forever. Permanently. <laughs> I don't think if I use, I don't think I use checks for anything except for like, I'll write like Kelsey a check for like our mortgage or something, like my cut. Which is funny also, why don't you use like Venmo or? Well, I think Venmo has like limitations on like amounts. I have no idea, I don't use it. I don't know, I think there might be, I don't know. Or it might take like, I think it takes like longer than a check would to clear. Like it hmm. takes like, like seven, five to seven days. No shit. All for like I know, a certain amount. I mean, my wife, we even, we Venmo our babysitters. Are we Venmo's, at home? Venmo's great for everything. Yeah, at home, and it's like, send her writing them a check. It's like, yeah, I'll send you Venmo. Well, it's good. You can get them out the door, and they don't know how much they're getting. So you don't feel bad about shortchanging them. Mm, yeah. Yeah, checks are... Paying like seven checks. bucks for eight hours Be of work. Before the uh, picture-taking picture, picture taking check, like, what yeah. a fucking inconvenience that is. Oh, yeah, go to the bank. The line's always big. There's always a fucking issue. I got to pull up to the drive-up ATM. I got to roll down my fucking window. You have to wait for them to not serve you from the business line. What? <laughs> And here, what if I don't have electronic windows? I gotta hand crank that window down to use the drive up ATM? Don't even get me started. Where's the business drive up ATM? That's what they need. Yeah. <laughs> this has someone out there like like uh, like cones that wave on. Uh, like like, uh, like, like an a, airport, yeah. like a, someone on the tarmac? For the business line. Waving you in. Right this way, sir. No, they'll screw you over there too. They'll find a way to screw you everywhere. Oh, yeah. They'll, well, they're out to get you. <laughs> well, one thing I've really learned today is they're out to get you. Yeah. Well, you know why the bank doesn't just immediately deposit the uh, the funds in your account, right? Because they don't actually exist. Because they're out to get you. And there's that. That's a, that's absolutely what it is. There's all these buildings that just loan out money that doesn't exist. How <laughs> bizarre is that? It's a bank. <laughs> I know. And all these little these little buildings that have that are made of just brick and mortar. And Ten out paper. Just, there's handing out things that isn't real. Yeah. It's like the checks. Funny. The funny thing too about checks. It's like. Uh, it's like Dumb and Dumber with like the IOUs. They're just as good as money, right? But well, like, the whole funny thing about that is that, is that that's exactly what checks really are. It's funny. Yeah, man. Well, Dean, what's uh, what's new with uh, what's going on with Caffeine Kilos? What do we got coming up? Man, we got a lot coming up. We got a lot of hats coming out. We got a lot of new uh, script logo designs coming it's out. The men's men's women's t shirts. 2018 crop tops. year of the script. Year of the script. Doing a lot of script stuff. Uh, we we're actually new women's crops. Are we doing a we're doing a men's crop in the script also? Yeah, might as well. Yeah. Let that belly pop out. No, no, the men's crop is the the men's crop is the uh, it's the reverse crop. It's something that shows off your chest and arms but covers up your beer belly. Oh, that's right. Kind of almost like a uh, like, a tank, like, a like a string or tank top. Like a like a skirt. Like a, or a chest I, skirt. A chest skirt. Torso skirt. Yeah. Think if you've got suspenders and like uh, hung a lampshade from them, like a barrel. I think of like the old uh, like the rodeo. Like the rodeo clown. 
Mm -hmm. right? pants are up and it's like super far away. So the pants can go up like over your belly, but then your chest and arms are still showing off. It's the reverse crop. You gotta be, uh, there's nothing better than the, uh, this the boiler maker <laughs> with, the, with the gun show. Yeah. And some old crusty like arm tattoo. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, the, the boiler maker is one thing, but I've just, I've just always, I say as a general rule, I used to say for men, but now I think it's across the board really. As long as your chest is sticking out farther than your uh, than your gut, you're in good shape. Like for guys, that's kind of the rule. It's like it's like uh, say you put on a couple pounds. Like maybe we're going up weight class or whatever, or just you know been a little late. Whatever's going on, right? You're in a, you're in a, you're just good gains. You're in a mass gain cycle. <laughs> so I kind of figured that's kind of the rule. Like as long as your chest is sticking out farther than your gut, you're all right. A relaxed gut. A relaxed gut. But all of a sudden, belly starts sticking out farther than your chest. It's time to tighten some things up or start benching more. Yeah, you know what I mean? You just get a bigger chest. I can, right? And then, then I, so I used to think that was just a rule for guys. Then I realized it's actually that works for women too. Yeah, like really, as, you, as long as your chest sticks out farther than your stomach, like all's not lost. Yeah. You know, like that's just general kind of like all right, like you know, mm -hmm. you can you can get some you can get some clothes that look nice on you. You can fit into some stuff. Like you're all right. <laughs> Man, yeah, it's uh. <laughs> I'm just picturing. For some reason, I'm just picturing like some dude with like a goatee and just his boiler maker in, in it with a with a cut off on. Now, with that is uh is the is the shirt popping up a little bit at the bottom, so you just get a little oh, yeah. bit of that hairy belly sticking out. Well, you're just seeing. You don't even see the necessary belly. You're just seeing just the separation in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> where you can see the where you can see the waistband of the pants. Yeah, well, you see the waistband. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're talking like a hard gut too. Oh yeah. That's like, that rock hard. It's like they got a bowling ball in there. Oh yeah, like like there's some severe like uh um hardened it's dangerous sub, dangerous fat in it's there. It's sub abdominal fat. Yeah, that's the kind of like, you know, congestive heart failure fat. Yeah. That's, that's what it's called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. C H F. Yeah. That's the uh that rock hard stuff, you know, when the uh starts to turn like a, almost like a darker red in the rest of the body. Dude, then that I'll tell you though, you get that going, you can uh, you can still be like bench king, you know? Let it let it ride. Nice or little bench platform. You probably actually get a decent deadlift out. I think of the internal pressure. <laughs> you know, like you really tighten a belt down on that thing. Oh yeah, your core your core strong core strength skyrockets. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if the give take there is worth it. You know, you know that's <laughs> think of like think of also, you know what else you get out of that? When you squat, you actually get a, a third bounce. Yeah. So you know, when you catch a bounce out of the bottom of the squat, you normally get two bounces. You get the bounce of your uh, of your legs off of your legs, right? Like you get a bounce of your hamstrings off your calves, yeah. and you get a bounce of the bar bending. You get that gut, you get a third bounce. You get a belly off the thighs, hamstrings off the calves. Inner, the inner thigh bounce. And you get the inner thigh bounce. The, the belly thigh bounce, you get belly thigh, you get a hamstring calf, and you get the bar. And you're getting it's, a, it's a triple bounce. It's a triple bounce. Oh, man, that's funny. God, I just realized. There's nothing funnier, too, than just a, a big dude with, just like, a little skinny belt on. I like am, a weightlifting belt. Yeah, like, put some, yeah, let's say, hey, you got a four-inch limit. Yeah. Well, I'm talking, like, what's that one guy's name? Like, the main, uh, uh, oh, man, what's his name? The weight, the, the super, the most popular humongous. Yeah. Yes. Now yeah, he wears a tiny little Alico belt. Yeah, I mean, he only got four inches to deal with. And he's fucking gigantic. You see that that uh, the thing? Man, I don't remember what documentary it was. It just looks funny. When they're talking about, like, every morning breakfast, like, 36 egg omelets. 36 egg omelets? That's right. No. Dude, I'm telling you. Oh, wait, so 30, okay, never mind. Yeah, 36, like, eggs to make a single omelet. Right, not 36 single egg omelets. Okay, yeah. That would man, be, that'd be, that would take some time. Yeah, I was just thinking, yeah, that can't be it. Yeah, fold this guy up. All right, next, crack the next one in there. <laughs> a 36 egg omelet. Yeah. Egg whites? No, no, no. Full no, eggs. No, full eggs. <laughs> like, what does that even look like on a plate? Uh, big. Probably have to get, like, a pizza tray. How do you even eat all that? Uh, pizza tray. And then what about lunch? You know, Dean, the same way you eat an elephant. One bite at a time. <laughs> One bite at a time. The old 96er. I don't remember. Like, from the great outdoors. It sounds like he's... I mean, essentially, that's kind of part of my, my weight gain. I'm going to talk about it here. Full rotisserie chicken for lunch. So you go 12 egg omelet for breakfast, full rotisserie chicken for lunch, and a sensible dinner. <laughs> <laughs> we need to make a nutrition book, yeah, and it's literally three pages. Three pages. One page per meal, main course meal. 
All right, make it five pages. We'll do two snack pages. Well, you people need snacks. Yeah, so Is this a masking ebook? This would be a uh, uh, sustain. Sustain. You sustain your current weight class diet. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a maintain. Yeah. I think it would be the first page would be, you know, four eggs, three bacon, breakfast. <laughs> Regardless of weight class. Regardless of weight class. Gender. Or gender. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, the snack would be a protein shake. Protein shake. Or uh, maybe some peanut butter and uh, vegetable, like a celery. Hmm. What uh, about like some almond butter on a rice cake? No. Too carby? No. No. Pass. Uh, lunch. Okay. okay. Lunch would be. No, no, it's not too carby. I just don't like that. So yeah. we're not putting the book. So next page, third page would be uh, uh, two cups of rice, uh, 25 grams of protein of, cho of choice. Mm -hmm. uh, don't worry about the fat or the no. leanness of the protein. No, no. And about a cup of some vegetable. Yeah, got some vegetables in there. No. And then uh, uh, page three. Page three. Would be uh, repeat page two. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then page four would be, uh, it would just say, eh, sensible dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and page five would say, uh, you know, maybe have a little bit of fruit or a little bit of sweet snack if you have a, if you're really craving some, something sweet for dessert. Maybe a little Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> page, we'll find a Ben and Jerry's. Pa page five, a pint of, uh, <laughs> kind of American dream. <laughs> All right. So thanks. Uh, thanks for listening. This has been Gas Station Cappuccino, the podcast by Caffeine and Kilos. Hopefully you enjoyed our informative episode all about the American banking system. The inner workings of the American. Inner workings, the American. And how to, how to stick it to the bankers. How to really stick it to them. Cash it out and then sheepishly go outside and put it in the ATM so they don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> All right. There it is. Gas Stage Cappuccino. Thank you for tuning in. Please rate us on iTunes. Uh, you know, share it with a friend. Let somebody who, you know, has some free time and doesn't really care about too much real information, let them know that this is the, uh, the show for them. It is. You know, it's not, it's not good, but it'll do. It'll do. Just like the old Gas Station Cappuccino. That's right. All right. Thank you. See you.